good afternoon to everyone i welcome all of you to the 84th lecture the lecture series in non linear dynamics conducted by the department of non linear dynamics bharti dasan university with the support from rusa 2.0 it is my pleasure to introduce today's speaker dr aradhana singh from aizad tirupati dr aradhana attained her phd from Indian Institute of Technology in Doha in the year 2015 she carried out her postdoctoral studies in IIT in Doha for a year and then moved to the Institute of Mathematical Sciences Chennai and she continued her for post postdoctoral studies there for two years then she moved to Israel and continued her postdoctoral or the postdoctoral work for a year She is currently an inspired faculty in the Department of Physics, the Institute of Science Education and Research, Aisar Tilpur. Dr. Aradhana's research interests are network science, non-linear dynamics, statistical physics, brain networks, machine learning, and neural networks. With this short introduction, now I invite Dr. Aradhana to deliver the lecture. Over to you, Madam. Uh, thank you so much for the kind introduction. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'll be talking now uh, on the dynamics of networks of networks, and uh, as everybody knows, the networks are the integral part of our daily social intellectual lives, which connect us uh, at an ever accelerating pace by transforming the way we communicate, learn, and create, work, and play. And uh, networks have a central interest in study of biological system, including the brain, and it has been very, very, very helpful to understand some of the. principal uh, organization uh, principal organization uh, theories for uh, coming uh, like for uh, construction of the brains and other biological systems and uh, example of networks are the internet networks uh, where the nodes could be the routers and the edges could be the wires and in brains the uh, the nodes are the neurons and the edges are the synapses and uh, other examples are like the ww and the hollywood gene regulation network and ecology web where the uh, nodes are like as mentioned the pages actors proteins species and there is our hyperlinks movies binding sites and competition between the different species and uh, our network mainly consists of the nodes and edges and we can construct an agency matrix out of it which has value 1 uh, if a node i and g are connected and 0 otherwise so here this instead of one it could have a value also uh, in case of a weighted network and this schematic is a diagram of a simple karate club network um which is a social networks of individuals interacting when they are uh, part of karate club so um, the real world networks actually are not isolated they depend on each other and hence form network of networks or the multi layer networks for example uh, we can uh, see that the power grid networks are dependent on the communication networks transportation network and the gas networks similarly the other networks depends on the power grid networks and therefore form a uh, network of networks which is called as a multi layer network also so anons have uh, the nodes in different layers that can have different topology and the as is between the, nodes madam, the slides are not moving madam okay so is it moving now? yes yes it is moving now okay okay so like um uh, as i um, mentioned earlier um like, uh, as we get some problem with the uh, mic actually i am hearing my voice i don't know why But now you can continue. Okay, so the networks are an integral part of our daily society, as I mentioned, uh, which uh, we can see in internet brain and WW Hollywood brain regulatory and ecology web, and are uh, well uh, understood uh, from the agency matrix, uh, which has values one or zero if uh, nodes are connected and zero otherwise, and. Uh, in real world networks the networks are like uh, dependent on each other therefore form a network of networks also called as a multi layer networks such as in case of a power grid it's dependent on the communication network gas network and transportation network so are the slide slides moving now 
yes moving yes it's moving please go ahead so uh, in case of the networks of networks the nodes are different in different layers and the edges between the nodes of the same layer are called the intra layer connections and the edges between the nodes of the different layer are called as the intra layer connections and the different layer could reflect different forms of interaction spatial locations subsystems or point in the time so this is a schematic of a two layer uh, multi layer network and this is the adjacency matrix for the same and the adjacency matrix for the um, multi layer network is called as the uh, supra adjacency matrix and it's a combination of adjacency matrix for all the layers so the diagonal one are the adjacency matrix for the different layers and this uh, off diagonals are the the coupling between the different layers so uh, there are mainly two types of multi layer network multi multiplex networks uh, the examples are the social network where the people can be connected because they belong to the same family or friend or they are working in the same workplace and the network of uh, different cities which are connected through rail road or air transportation and the another type of uh, multi layer networks are the interconnected networks or the interdependent networks such as the network of com computers linked together by cables and the telephone lines brain networks infrastructure networks and the global economy so this is the schematic of one of the social networks uh, created where uh, the authors considered the different type of relation between the different uh, between the same group of uh, people considering they are uh, belonging to the same uh, school or the community or the household or the workplace so the studies on multi layer networks actually uh, is very much important uh, because the interdependence between the network failures of a node uh, can trigger the failure of dependent nodes in other networks which may pre pre produce an iterative cascade of failures in several interdependent networks leading to a global cascade of failures such as in case of the power grid uh, cascade is usually called, uh, caused by the coupling between the power grid and its communication support system and uh, also for understanding the influence of uh, information spread and the role of different modes of transmission in infectious disease dynamics and uh, from the point of view of robustness of complex networks uh, actually the robustness is the ability of a network to maintain most of its vital function even if some of the its connections or some of the uh, parts are removed but uh, in the real world system it has been found that some of the major uh, breakdowns ha has happened such as in case of the power grid uh, networks uh, recently in january 2023 uh, pakistan uh, faced the uh, blackout which affected 230 million people approximately 99% population of pakistan in 2022 bangladesh blackout happened which affected 80% of the population and in 2012 in, the, in india the blackout happened uh this uh, diagram is uh, for that uh, um actually the that black, uh, like uh, blackout uh, started with the tipping of the bina gwalior line uh, which cascaded and uh, you can see that's the red regions and the orange regions all these areas get affected by that uh, tipping or tripping of single line so in that respect the study of the uh, robustness of complex network is really very much important and uh, the the cascades uh, also has happened in the global financial uh, market uh, like in 2007 2019 the global financial crisis happened which was ignited by us and spreaded across most of the developed countries and in case of the economic networks actually uh, the triggers could be uh, the natural environmental disaster war government policy or insufficient financial capability so by understanding the robustness of the network we can design a communication system car or airplanes that can carry out their basic functions despite of occasional component failures and can study the systematic risk in um, economy we can prevent future blackouts uh, also we can understand why some mutations leads to diseases why while others do not so uh, like uh, the external perturbation or uh, there could be external perturbation for the uh, breakdown of a network or could be internal so the internal one are basically the errors uh, which could be uh, the malfunctioning of a particular connection or a node so the uh, the malfunctioning of a particular uh, connection or a node may not affect the network at all but the removal of uh, two or many components may lead to uh, complete breakdown of the system as shown in this schematic 
and uh, the another way the uh, the networks get affected uh, is uh, the attacks so attacks actually uh, the aim of the attacks is to maximally influence the networks uh, and therefore uh, uh, the removal of the structurally important nodes happens uh, such as uh, the nodes which are having the very high degree centrality or very high between is centrality so uh, mainly uh, there are two type of networks like the random networks and the networks uh, the scale free networks and the random networks uh, for the random networks it has been found that uh, the percolation of uh, happens like the uh, the breakdown of the network happens in the both cases the random failure as well as the attacks whereas in case of the heterogeneous networks that is the scale free networks uh, the scale free networks are very much uh, robust against the uh, uh, failures there is very much fragile against the attacks because you can see that uh, in the case of the heterogeneous networks uh, like node 1 in the schematic if you remove remove node 1 in the right uh, right side of the schematic uh, the whole network uh, will collapse whereas uh, if you remove a small degree nodes uh, nothing will happen so uh, the robustness has been uh, understood in terms of percolation which is a uh, very well studied uh, in uh, the field of statistical physics and mathematics and uh, like for the simplest uh, example of percolation is like if there are uh, different uh, pebbles on a square lattice and we want to connect these pebbles with certain probability at what probability value we will get a uh, finite uh, 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 plus the the full connected uh, square lattice so for that actually it has been found that at the critical cluster near the value uh, pc uh, there is a transition the phase transition and uh, at that point uh, the, that cluster will is the fractal cluster with the effective dimension being 1.89 similarly in other systems also like uh, the elastic properties we we know already that, that they are very uh, interestingly changed with respect to the critical exponents and uh, and we can lose elasticity completely up after certain value of uh, the uh, critical thresh threshold also in case of the random mixture of conducting and the insulating materials it has been shown that uh, with respect to the different values of p uh, long range conduction can happen so uh like the percolation is like we connect the nodes with a certain probability so that finally we get a final uh, completely connected network the reverse of it would be in a completely connected network we remove some of the links such that finally it completely get fragmented so that is called the inverse percolation one of the example of inverse percolation is the spread of a fire in a forest so that uh, so like here the nodes will be uh, the trees and they will be connected if they are in vicinity and suppose uh, a, a a tree catches fire then it will ignite the uh, neighboring trees and this will continue until it it happens that there is a tree which does, does not at all have any uh, neighboring tree so the fraction of nodes f which can be uh, which should be removed in order to completely fragment this uh, the network is uh, related with probability p of connecting it which is and is given as p is equal to 1 minus f and the critical critical threshold uh, for this uh, fraction f has been calculated as following where k is this uh, the first moment for the network and the k square this term is the second moment for the network and we know that uh, in case of the scale free network the second moment diverges has zero values and therefore the the scale free networks are really very robust with respect to the random removal of the nodes whereas uh, for random networks they have the finite value of a second moment and hence they uh, fragment with respect to the removal of uh, random connections or nodes so uh, in order to understand uh, this uh, transition from uh, the fully connected state to the completely fragmented state this uh, parameter has been studied which is uh, flcc the fraction of uh, nodes in the largest connected clusters so if you plot fs is the fraction of nodes in the largest connected cluster with respect to the fraction of nodes removed with respect to the random removal and the 
bit, uh, the centrality based removal which could be the degree based or the between centrality based removal then like this is a heterogeneous network uh, actually this is the uh, this the karate club network where this uh, the green nodes are the high degree nodes and the red nodes are the low degree nodes and the removal of the high degree nodes we can see really uh, the threshold is uh, very small for the removal of a uh, high degree or the high between centrality nodes whereas uh, this threshold for complete fragmentation of the node is very high for the random removal so this is also um, one of the scale free networks and th this was all about the uh, uh, like single layers when they were they, they, then the impact of another layer was not considered however here also we can divide the nodes on the basis of their uh, degree into the two layers and we can see that the high degree nodes are belong we, we can see that the high degree nodes are belonging to one layer and the low degree nodes are belonging to the another layer which actually we did before that i would say that uh, the robustness of networks of networks has has been studied and it has been shown that they are really like uh, they are really very fragile as compared to the isolated networks because of the dependency li links and uh, if this uh, dependency if this dependency is assertive like in this paper it has been shown if it is assertive then it could be actually helpful for the robustness whereas if it is assertive it would be uh, uh, really bad for the robustness of the networks so uh, we studied uh, robustness of uh, inter and the intra layer uh, dependent networks so uh, we divided the network of networks into uh, three parts uh, so there are, uh, there are three types of uh, anons first the intra dependent where the connection between the uh, nodes in the different layers is Uh, more than the interconnections and the balanced one, which has the equal number of the connection or equal proportion of the connections between the layers and within the layers. And third case is the interdependent uh, networks, where the connection between the different layers is uh, more than within the layer. So this could be a uh, different scenarios in different uh, type of anons. And we found that uh, if we construct such a network. the degree distribution just even for the uh, random uh, connection between the nodes the degree distribution uh, for networks which are having this uh, uh, very different number of nodes in different layers could be bimodal like this f and g are for the anons bilayer anons uh, having uh, very different number of nodes in different layers so if the number of nodes are same in both layers it is showing the same type of distribution like uh, the portion as as it should be in case of the random network but uh, if the sizes of the networks uh, are changed the sizes of the layers are changed uh, this distribution becomes bimodal and this has a uh, impact on the robustness of the network so like here we can see that this uh, the parameter r which is uh, 0.01 shows that uh, the network is mainly uh, the intra layer dependent the there are denser connections within uh, a layer but then between layer and r is equal to 1 means uh, there is a balance between the intra and the inter layer connections and r is equal to 100 means there are more inter layer connections than the intra layer connections and here uh, a b c uh, like the three panels are for uh, with respect to the random removal of the nodes with respect to the degree based removal of the nodes and with respect to the between the centrality based uh, removal of the nodes and we can see that the, with respect to the random removal of the nodes the network is quite robust whereas with respect to the degree uh, degree based attack uh, it is uh, it is uh, less robust than uh, the random but it is still uh, more robust as compared to the other two cases which are for the uh, nodes with the mm, which are for the cases where the number of the nodes in the different layers are different so actually i am not able to see pointer here so i'm not able to show but uh, the figure e f h i are showing uh, for the networks which are having very different uh, number of nodes in the different layers and for them we can see that the uh, the way uh, the size of the largest cluster is changing is quite different um, 
with respect to the removal of the bituminous centrality based attack there could be even a discrete channel transition from the fully connected to the uh, uh, 80% or 50% connection in the uh, largest 50% uh, nodes in the largest connected uh, clusters and uh, with respect to the degree based attack, there is a change but it is continuous similarly uh, this uh, happens in case of the third case, which is the where the number of nodes are also very different, but uh, it's given as n1 is equal to n2 by 4. So we can say that actually that uh, a discontinuous change in the size of the largest connected component against the targeted attack is observed for the networks having more interdependence and the more interdependence leads to better robustness for the bi-layer interdependent networks against the targeted attacks. So this was shown in this uh, the previous figure, this B and C. So we can see that the in B and C, the sizes of the both of the layers are same. Just the difference is that the, the attack is degree-based and, and between is centrality-based. So you can see that uh, the network, which is intra-layer, so uh, intra-layer dependent network, uh, which is shown by blue curve, here, they, here there is a discontinuous change. Whereas uh, here there is a continuous change. So that is also like uh, the networks which are uh, intradependent still could be really uh, uh, very much fragile with respect to the betweenness and trinity removal of the nodes because the nodes that are connecting to the different layers have higher betweenness and trinity as compared to the uh, other nodes. And, uh, once these nodes are removed, the network fragments into two parts. Like uh, that's why it's giving uh, the value 0.5. And the second result is that heterogeneity in the sizes of different layers makes interdependent networks fragile against the attacks, whereas the robustness of the intradependent networks increases against degree-based attacks. An increase in the number of layers prevent ab abrupt changes in the sizes of largest connected components. So overall, we can say that increasing the interdependence can make networks of networks vulnerable to the targeted attacks on the nodes, especially when there are very different number of nodes in different layers. So later I will discuss, uh, discuss about the dynamics on the complex networks. So dynamics on the complex network can be understood using the coupled maps or the coupled oscillators. So the role of, uh, uh, role of the network comes here in the agency uh, metrics. And um, this is the example of one of the social network where the people are connected because they're interacting through different modes and uh, their opinion is changing. So the change in opinion is the dynamics that is happening on this network. So uh, there could be different uh, type of phenomena on, uh, on uh, uh, a network and we I have I have been particularly interested in synchronization and synchronization refers to the phenomena where the different events occur at the same time this was first observed by Christian Hagen in 1960 in 1665 and so we can see these are the this is the schematic of uh, two uh, pendulums which are connected through a rod and uh, Christian Hagen noticed that these two uh, pendulums started oscillating out of phase uh, which was the first observation of synchronization. And after that, they have, they have, there have been uh, many works on the, in this field. And uh, there uh, are different other examples as well, such as the hands clapping and dancers dancing in a group, ensemble of doves, synchronization of fireflies, synchronization of neurons, pacemaker cells that have to fire uh, like electrical charges synchronously so that uh, our heart beat, beat properly. So, uh, synchronization could be global, where the, all the nodes get synchronized and form a, a, a cluster, uh, one cluster, whereas uh, the synchronization could be local. In the local synchronization, some of the nodes get synchronized and form the cluster. So, the cluster synchronization we can see in many systems. Some of the examples are the like opinion formation in the social network, if there is a group and there is a... And, some problem is there depending upon the different opinions, people may get uh, divided into different groups. And uh, in case of the brain, like we know that uh, the cluster synchronization is required for the proper functioning and the global synchronization is associated with the diseases state. 
so uh, the earlier work have shown that uh, there are mainly two mechanism of uh, cluster synchronization the self organized input synchronization and the synchronization mainly happens because of the connection uh, between the uh, direct connections between the nodes and the metric for it is apentra which is given as number of connections in the self organized cluster divided by total number of the connections and the examples of such synchronization is the social ethnic religious groups and the political groups and the cartel of industries and the countries herd of animals in the flocks of the birds and the another type of synchronization is the driven synchronization where a node of a cluster can synchronize because of inter cluster coupling uh, example of such is uh, such type of clusters is behavior of fence during a ma match or the formation of opposite ethnic groups the quantitative measure for it is affinity which is given as the total number of the connections in the driven cluster divided by total number of the total number of the connections so uh, these uh, studied the dynamics on the multiplex networks and uh, mainly the bilayer networks so we wanted to understand what are the different uh, cluster patterns in the different networks upon multiplexing so when there are two ne networks as i had discussed earlier there could be different uh, connection density of different layers therefore different uh, degree of uh, mean degree of different layers and uh, we our aim was to see that how this uh, the um, topology of one layer is affecting the dynamics on the other layer and um, we found that uh, actually the uh, upon multiplexing there is an enhancement enhancement in the cluster synchronization as we can see that this diagram is showing uh, the variation of f plus which is the fraction of uh, nodes forming a synchronized clusters with respect to the coupling strength epsilon and here at uh, higher coupling values we see there is almost no cluster synchronization whereas upon multiplexing the synchronization is enhancing so if we see this uh, if we try to visualize these uh, uh, clusters we see that at uh, lo um, uh, the epsilon is equal to 0 0.026 this is for uh, isolated network and as we multiplex it this uh, b is belonging to the corresponding uh, multiplex state and there is uh, the formation of the clusters and again uh, at epsilon is equal to 0.84 there are no cluster formation but as we multiplex it in the d it is shown uh, the formation of the cluster happen so this the squares are the uh, different clusters and the black dots are the connections so the presence of black dots in the squares shows that these uh, clusters are uh, formed because of the self organized mechanism and uh, also in this uh, e and f we can see in e there are less number of the clusters but these clusters are of driven driven type like there are no black dots in the squares and as soon as we multiplex is the synchronization is enhancing the bigger we are getting bigger squares but uh, the black dots are mostly inside the bigger squares indicating that these uh, clusters are formed because of the self organized mechanism so the multiplexing is enhancing the synchronization and uh, mainly because of the self organized mechanism so um, next if we see that uh, what is the impact of the connection density of one layer on cluster synchronizability of another layer we see that uh, when uh, uh, when the density of two layers is approximately same like here uh, we have considered uh, k1 is equal to 4 and k2 value is changing from 4 to 12 we see that when the k1 k2 is approximately same the synchronization is more the value of f plus which is the fraction of nodes forming the cluster is more also the number of nodes in the largest cluster is more and as we increase the value of k2 this value is decreasing showing the cluster synchronization is decreasing therefore indicating that uh, the higher density in the another layer is not uh, supporting to the cluster synchronizability of another layer so uh, this is associated with uh, the uh, dissertative coupling between the mirror nodes so uh, when the when the degree of uh, both layers the k1 k2 is approximately same uh, their uh, their degree is uh, not at all dissertatively coupled but as soon as we increase the value of uh, uh, connection density of another layer the k2 of another layer the 
degree distribution of the mirror nodes so mirror nodes are the nodes that are uh, that are uh, in case of the multiplex networks the nodes are same so one node in this layer and another node in uh, the same node in the another layer, layer are called as a mirror nodes so uh, there is a dissertative coupling when uh, a2 value is very high and this dissertative coupling is leading to a suppression in the cluster synchronization of the another layer and as we when we see it uh, with respect to this affinter and affinter plot which is indicating that which mechanism is behind this suppression we see that this basically this self organized mechanism is behind uh, the suppression of the cluster synchronization so as the value of k2 is increasing this red curve is for the affinter value which correspond to the self organized synchronization and it is suppressing so the suppression is happening because of suppression is the self organization and uh, which was also the uh, reason for the enhancement of the synchronization so the we can say that uh, the self organization enhances then this uh, the degree of the mirror nodes is uh, approximately same and uh, as soon as we increase the dissertativity in the uh, degree of the mirror, mirror nodes it's uh, uh, suppressing the self organization synchronization so um, we also studied that uh, what's the uh, case in case of the delayed evol evolution because we know that uh, delays are, are unavoidable in a system so because uh, because of the finite speed of information transmission so uh, we found that the, in, even in case of the delay uh, when we multiplex the two networks the synchronization enhancing so this phenomena remains same like the enhance there is enhancement in synchronization upon multiplexing even if the system is delayed here we can see that uh, Uh, a state which is is a multi cluster state and as soon as we multiplex it we get a uh, global synchronization how um, um, and uh, also like uh, in case of uh, delayed system we see that there is not much impact of uh, value of delay in uh, different layers like uh, if tau1 is a value of delay in one layer and tau2 is the value of delay in another layer if we change the value of tau2 there is not much impact on the uh cluster synchronizability of this uh, uh layer 1 so which is represented by a red red curve also we see that as we change the value of k to the uh, density of the uh, another layer earlier we were seeing that there was suppression in the uh, cluster synchronization as we were enhancing the connection density of the another layer but here when we increase uh, the connection density of the another layer there is not suppression in the cluster synchronization so this is one of the thing like uh, when uh, there is delay in the system it makes uh, the dynamics of the system unaffected by the connection density of the another layer so in conclusion we can say that the cluster synchronization of the network is enhanced in the presence of multiplexing however it depends on the a uh, degree correlation between the mirror nodes and a dissertative coupling between the mirror nodes uh, can separate the syn synchronization of the undelayed layer uh, but in case of the delay the synchronization of the um, the sparser layer remains unaffected by the connection density of the another layer so with this i would uh, conclude it and would like to acknowledge my mentors professor sarika jalan uh, Professor Sitabra Sinha, Professor Baruch Barzil, and my collaborators, Professor Bokaleki and Dr. Shigosh. Thank you, everyone. Uh, thank you, madam. So this forum is open for discussion, clarifications, questions. Students. students any questions
We are not pursuing any questions. Maybe I can ask one question. Um, yes, 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 yes. Very nice talk, Aradhana. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask the question, if you have, uh, suppose, more than two layers, so any of your, this phenomena will uh, like uh, feed forward it to other layers or something like that? Um, like if you have delay in one layer, is it can, possible that it can be feed forwarded a phenomena from the second layer to third layer? Like the way the Vasundra has shown recently, I think you may be knowing like... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Access the actually, can, yeah and it feed forwarded the things, so yeah. Yeah, actually that can happen. Mm -hmm. And like uh, that could be more like uh, the extension of the study. Mm -hmm. Okay, Aradna, thank you. Thank you so much. Very nice talk. Thank you. So, any other clarifications, students? Uh, okay, we are not receiving any questions, sir, uh, Professor. Uh, so, okay, and I'm very sorry for the this, this technical problem. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay because yeah. uh, it's normal. Uh, so since we are not receiving any more questions, uh, I would like to conclude the session by thanking Dr. Aradhana Singh for accepting our invitation and giving a very wonderful talk on the network of networks. Thank you very much. Dr. Thank you, Aradhana. sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.